welcome back to episode 51 of the Shy Sports Weekly Podcast. Ty, Kyle, what's up, boys? How are we doing? Ladies, how are we doing? Been a bit here. Uh, it's good to be back. Always back on the sticks here. Why does it feel oh. like it's been a while? Didn't we just record a show last week? No, you ba- you bailed on us. Was it two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Oh, that's Today. right. Last week was a holiday. Yeah, Jesus Christ has risen. But we're back. Shout out, Jesus. You don't talk about that comeback enough. That should have been. I don't know if we did. Uh, <laughs> did we do a? Who did we do the comebacks? Greatest comebacks of all time. Or like greatest underdog stories. I mean, talk I about Jesus rising, rising, from, rising from the dead. Yeah, I don't know how that was in the first pick. <laughs> yeah, wow. Talk. That's that's definitely on quite, us. Quite the miss on our part. I guess we just haven't been to church in quite some time. What uh? What have you guys been up to? How's everything going? Everything's you know, going, dude. It's going. So we finally had some nice weather this weekend, played some golf, and then uh, right back into the 40s today. <laughs> it is frigid outside. How'd you shoot them? Um, not great. I played this course in Lake Geneva at the Grand Geneva called The Brute, and it lived up to its name. Very what tough. was it called? The Brute? The Brute. B-R-U-T-E. And you were brutal? Yeah. I mean, I shot like a 99 but I was just happy to break a hundred. <laughs> That's a good day on the course the, for me. The wind was like, it was like 30 mile an hour winds. It was ridiculous, but. Would you shoot on the, the back nine? 48. So that means you shot a 51 on the front it's nine? Back. It's good math. It's good quick math. You know what that means? It's episode 51. Oh! Segway. Nice. Look at that. I was Take actually hoping to talk about, uh, talk about quick math over here. Let's jump into 51s. Right, you first kick us off. 51 was my front nine score at the Brute. <laughs> at the Brute. Hold I your applause. Um, all right. I'm going to kick it off with number 51 on the Chicago Cubs from 01 to 03, Juan Cruz. Wow. I was not expecting Juan Cruz to be the first name dropped here. Um, I'm going to go with something a little more historic, Dick Buckus. Oh, wow. I can't believe I actually had him, too. I always just go to the Cubs. <laughs> he was like I, third on the list. I I had him be behind Juan Cruz and Brian Campbell. <laughs> you know you're, like, a legitimate legend, like, as far as sports go, if your name is Dick Buckus and no one even makes fun of it anymore. Like, it, it's not it, – it's, it doesn't even phase me to hear the name Dick Buckus. I just think of, like, an, an absolute football icon. A legend. And he went to U of I, too, so he's just an Illinois, Chicago legend in general. Through he, through. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is he from the Chicago area? Uh, I'm not going to correct you because I don't know if you're wrong. Can we get our producer, Ty, on that? Can, you, can you look that up for us? <laughs> Mr. Dick Buckus at your service, dude. I don't know if I'm thinking him or, or Red Grange. <laughs> Eight-time pro bowler, six-time first-team pro. Dick Buckus was? <clears throat> yep. There we go. Look at us. That's why, uh, that's why we, you're one stop shop for everything Chicago sports. He was like a mean dude, too. This guy was playing football in the 60s. Anyone playing football in the 60s is just like different. Just had to be one mean son of a bitch. Hey, real that's quick, it. let's talk. Let's talk. Uh, actually, we'll talk about this after we get into the or after we're done with the 51s. Um, all right. So I, I mentioned Brian Campbell already, right? I mean, by association. Let's go. Let's see. White Sox here. Wow, there's a lot of shitty players. Uh, ooh, Alex Rios. He was okay. Yeah, he was him, actually solid. I'll give him an okay. Why? Besides that, there's uh, there's nothing here that I, I don't want to mention anybody else's name. Got down a rabbit hole of talking about random Blue Jays players recently, and Alex Rios. Was awesome. uh, I think he uh, – God, I'm going to see if he won – if, I, if he won the 2007 Home Run Derby, I'm going to be so pumped. You don't want to mention Ryan Tapera? A little double dip action? Oh, that's because he didn't win the 2007 Home Run Derby. Vlad did. Okay. I don't know why I thought <laughs> Alex Rios won the Home Run Derby, but... Yeah, that didn't sound right, to be honest. <laughs> and it's I can't even blame the weed. I haven't smoked in like a week and a half here, so <laughs> I'm just I'm losing it. How about um, Carson Fulmer? What a bust that guy was. Do you know who was picked uh, one draft pick before him? Was it Dansby Swanson? Nope. 
Um, had to be a Cubs player. No, no. Who was it? Who was it then? Tyler J. <laughs> okay, I would have never guessed that. Hashtag Lamont. Hashtag Lamont. Lamont. Podcast. You know who was? So he was uh, six, seven. Was Carson Fulmer number eight? He's in the big leagues right now, and number nine is on the Cubs right now. Can you name number eight and nine? Both, I'll say, left fielders. Carson Fulmer was nasty at Vanderbilt. Um, he was a dirty little birdie for sure. Okay, Ian Happ. Mm-hmm. For he was picked two picks after him, right? Yeah. And this guy who was one eighth uh, has already won a World Series. God. But he's not on his World Series winning team. Lefty, lefty. I'll give you that. That's my last hint. Before I just tell you his name. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me. Andrew name. Benintendi. Benny Biceps. Benny Biceps. That's what I call my dog. We're dropping some nice uh, trivia knowledge from what year was that? 2015. 15. Yeah. There we go. Uh, what else we got for? And that's it. I mean, I'm assuming there's no bear, our, uh, Bulls players wearing number 51. No, I mean, not that we care. Not none that, that are very good. Recognizable teaser for next episode. I think Brad Miller was number 52. He was. He definitely was. I know that for a, a goddamn fact. Uh, I, I'm seeing something that says Jeremy Roenick wore 51 in 1989. Yeah, that must have been just for like a game or two because he was number 27 with the Hawks. Uh-huh. Okay. So, so I'm not sure. It was like a Jordan jersey thing. Someone uh-huh. stole the uniform. Uh huh. Um, I'm trying to see. Yeah, we'll, that, we'll we'll end on that. We'll end on Jeremy Roenick in 1989 wearing number 51. Uh, real quick, what I was gonna mention earlier. How about Elon Musk buying Twitter? I know that's nothing to do with Chicago sports, but I mean we're on Twitter a lot. <laughs> yeah, so do he bought any? it for 44 billion in cash. I can't even like wrap my cash? head around how big of a number that is. Yeah, but like just imagine buying something and 44 billion dollars worth of cash. Elon, how are you going to pay these guys? Straight cash, homie. <laughs> what a Absolutely ball. absurd. I mean, I, that feel is like, I feel like it was just like a, a little, like, it's like a game to him, too. He doesn't give a fuck. Right. He's like, eh, yeah, I guess I'll just, I'm not doing anything anyways right now. I'm just going to go buy Twitter. It's like, all right. <laughs> Imagine being that bored. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, <laughs> He's kind of crazy, and I—I eh, I mean, I don't know anything really more than that about him. I don't know what he's got, what his plans are, but I, I love chaos, so I'm down with it. Yeah, it'll be yeah. interesting to see what happens. Uh, speak for Billy for a fucking website. No more censoring in the Shy Sports Weekly tweets. It's—I mean, that's—that's that's kind of what. <laughs> that's what we need. That's we need less censoring, at. less censorship. So Ty can uh, put his nipples online anytime he wants. Uh, talking about a little chaos, how about the Bulls series against the Bucks? Talk about a roller coaster ride. How about that? We are we are in the depths of of the cellar right now. I mean, do you want to talk about Game One? Do you want to talk? Game, or I shouldn't say Game One because that was last Sunday. But do you want to talk Game the the actual win, or do you want to talk about those abysmal three game or two games back at the United Center? I mean, let's just talk about the whole thing, starting with Game Two. Game two was fun. It was a lot of fun. That was fun. Stole I'm smiling. One, stole one in Milwaukee. I mean, they absolutely had to gut that one out. And I feel like DeRozan played pretty much as well as he could. Like, everything was kind of working and going right for them. And they still only won by four. But a win was a win. Um, Win's a win, a win. I was fired up after that one. Uh-huh. I was, too. That was a great game. Uh, and then after that game, between game two and three, we find out Chris Middleton is out for the remainder of the series. And I'm not going to lie. I had hope. I had, like, plausible hope. Absolutely. I mean, that that game three at the United Center, that, that was as much hype around the Bulls playoff game that I can remember in, you know, within the last 10 years, basically. That was, so that was their first home playoff game since 2017. Yep. And they turned in those two shit performances. They scored. They lost. Well, I mean, what did they? What was the combined or what was the scores of those two games? I don't even know. Well, I know, they, I think they, lost, they lost know by they, like twenty four five each. Yeah, each I'm game. pretty sure they lost by thirty in game three. It was the worst <laughs> playoff loss in Bulls history. Um, We're buzzing. Like just like just all the hype that led up to that game, like 
I had friends that were buying tickets the day of or the day before for like 200 bucks each. And it's just like, can't imagine a much bigger letdown than, than what was displayed there. They had like 44 points halfway through the third quarter. Yeah. That was one of those where it's like, hey, those games are honestly the worst because you, you can't turn them off. It's like, yeah. I, I got to watch. I mean, they're in the playoffs. You got to like, what if they come back and you miss it? Like you, you kill yourself. It was just like a, a humble reminder as to why the Bulls opened the series like 10 point underdogs to the Bucks. And they're 10 point underdogs again tomorrow, which right back at it. I honestly think I might take the, the Bulls plus 10. <laughs> hey, I want it on record that last the last time we recorded, I said, correct me if I'm wrong, I said Bulls are plus 10, sprinkle the Bulls. Is plus, that like sprinkle them plus 10. I, I took them to win straight up and I won. Once this was the game that they won. Yeah, game two. Okay. But well, all I'm saying is I was right, dude. I was right about the Bulls. I said the Bulls were gonna go down in six, and I think that was the furthest any of us had them going. Yeah, no, I mean I had them in five, uh, losing in five, so I had a gentleman sweep. Yeah. Which it's like where it's headed. Oh yeah. It just, I mean, I'm not gonna act like I'm a some I'm some big basketball axes and O's guy, but it just. <laughs> I feel like take like DeRozan, he's good at taking those mid range jumpers, right? I mean, that's like, that's his bread and butter. Bread and butter yeah. He's one of the best in the league, best of all time at it, honestly. I feel like if he's not hitting those, they're fucked though, because they, they do not shoot, they do not get to the basket at all. Or at least these past couple of games, they did not get to the basket at all. They were like scared to get in the paint. And Giannis is like a fucking tarantula in there. He's just swatting everything in sight. He's ridiculous. It's, it's so cyborg. So it's not a real human. Watch him because I feel like. You know, he is one of the best players in the league. So I feel like he gets some leeway from the refs. Like he he throws oh, yeah. his fucking weight around the paint. Flops around like a dead fish out there sometimes. It's like, Jesus, dude, you're six eleven, like built like a brick shit house, and Al Caruso is just bodying you out of the way. No shot. It's like JFK <laughs> I'm even talking about shot. when he's on offense. Like he lowers his shoulder when he gets in the lane almost every time. Um, it is it is actually like I mean, it's amazing to watch him just get to the basket. He takes like from the three point line. I think it might maybe, maybe one dribble and he's like dunking it. It doesn't yeah, make crazy. any sense. His arms are so long. It's, it, yeah, the whole thing just, you're right. It doesn't make sense. It's, I mean, obviously there's no, they're not going to win the series. I'm not, nobody's going to say they're going to win the series. It's, it's like it more so they just want them to be competitive and they, they weren't. I mean, yeah, they haven't, yeah. they haven't won a home playoff game since 2015. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. The Blackhawks have won a home playoff game more recently than that. I mean, granted, Can't, honestly, the Hawks were a wagon for a while there, but they they suck now too. Right. Just just from watching, I mean, the past couple of games, like I can't tell if it's more so the Bucks are really good at defense, which I think they are, or if the Bulls' offense is that bad. It's like when it's on the Bucks end of the floor on offense, they are getting open looks at will. Whether it's in the paint or kicking Everywhere. Out someone wide open for a three, it's like it couldn't look any easier for them. I know. Then Grayson Allen's the the second coming of like Ray Allen. Yes, he has honestly been like the catalyst for them in this in this series. I mean, and his <laughs> he's partially uh, the reason for our, what our starting five is going to be later in the show. Most punchable faces. <laughs> but my God, I mean, talk about just an all time heel. I yeah. mean, everybody hates that guy. Right. Seriously, I mean, anytime not, you see a shot of his go down, it's like God. Fuck. That fuck. Guy. It's literally, it's yeah. There's nothing you can do but just, just say like, "Fuck, yeah, this sucks." <laughs> yep. I mean, what did and what did he have yesterday? Twenty some, twenty four points, twenty eight points. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like anytime he lets go of a three, it's gonna go in. I, I he's shooting over fifty percent, like well over fifty percent on the series. I think. I know it's. I mean, you can't. You gotta give credit where credit's due, but at the same time, I I don't like it. I don't like him. Yeah. I'm not gonna. And the bu- the Bucks are gonna be a tough out if they keep playing like this. I mean, they're going to match up with the Celtics, and I think the Celtics are just going to feed them their cake. Yeah. Feed them their dinner and make them eat it too. Uh, but, yeah, the Bulls are done. Kind of sucks, but I don't even know what, what they need. Again, I guess that would be more of a you question. What do they need? Like, what's wrong with them? What, can, what do they need to add to be, like, a legit contender? I don't know. Like, it was just confusing because it felt like at the beginning of the season or even halfway through the season, you had, like, DeRozan went on that stretch of – of getting 30 plus 35 plus points a game for like 10 games in a row. Levine in the regular season was averaging close to 25 a night. 
playoffs, he's averaging like 17. Right? So I don't know. I mean, it's just like if these guys are having an off night, they, they don't have anyone else who can just like take over a game. So I feel like they need a guy that just is consistently filling it up or putting 30 points in the hoop no matter what. I mean, do you think Levine can become that guy? I think he should be. I thought he was going to be. I don't know if he's like – he's nursing something or if something's off because he's not playing like he was. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm right there with you. Well, there's always next year. <laughs> it's sad to say, but there's always next year for the Bulls. See what they do in the offseason. I mean, they need, you know, they need someone. Obviously, you're not going to find a Giannis, but a guy who kind of plays like similar to his style, I guess. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Grab his that. brother. His brother came in the game the other night and had a ridiculous dunk. His brother looks like he should be uh, a fullback for the Packers. <laughs> I think he's playing the wrong sport right now. I will say that the only, if there is a silver lining in this, which there really isn't, but if there is a silver lining, it's that the Bulls beat the Bucks the game that Aaron Rodgers had courtside. Yeah, that was nice. I like that. That's, I mean, that's almost like we won the series. I hope he had a terrible time. I, I hope he, I was, never mind. I was going to say something really bad, but yes, I hope he had a terrible time as well. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's jump into some Cubs talk here. Uh, two and five on the past week. How about this? They had, they're the only team in MLB history with a plus 17 run differential in the series, but to lose the series. Yikes. They, uh, the Pirates took three or four from them at home. However, we won't talk about Thursday, Friday, or Sunday's game. Let's talk about Saturday. 21 nothing. 23 hits. Say, you talk about the run differential. Every, all th- there were three games that are either four to three or four to two, and then the Cubs win the other one 21 zip. 21 nothing. Yeah, I know it's crazy. And I think the crazier part is that they only did it on one home run. Uh, the, the only home run was a rebound, two run shot, or three run homer. Because I don't think the Bears could even win a game 21 zero. And so, this is it. This is a better stat that I saw the largest shutout victory for the Bears over uh. A Pittsburgh football team, which obviously has always been the Steelers, or a Chicago football team over the Steelers, is twenty to nothing. <laughs> so the the Cubs have a higher or a larger margin of victory in a shutout over a uh, Pittsburgh team. Crazy yeah. thing is, like I, I I don't understand how they got to twenty one. It one home run, and it just seemed like yeah, there were a ton of base hits, but how many hits did they have? I think they had like twenty one hits, right? Twenty three. So. I mean, it's just like anytime someone was in scoring position, they, they were just capitalized. I think they had 18 singles or 16 singles, four doubles. Would it be two triples and a homer? When I first saw the score, I was like, all right, like it's a wind blowing out. But then at the same time, it's like Hendricks just shoved. <laughs> yeah, it was such a lopsided game. I know. Hendricks had uh, seven innings. Two hits, two Ks, no runs. Like, it's just phenomenal. Great outing from him. But I just love those, like, those crazy scores in baseball where you see, like, just an, out, an outrageously high number. I remember a couple years – I just got to say a couple years ago now. No, it honestly could have been, like, 15 years ago when the Rangers beat the Orioles 30-3. to That would have been – yes, yeah. Like, when you see – when you get up – like – I'm trying to think, at, at what point do you think it becomes just like an absolute stop and like, fight? Like you need a slaughter rule. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not going to say like 13. I think like what, maybe it's like once you hit 14 or 15 runs, it's like, okay, they're pouring it on. Like they're yeah. really pouring it on. <laughs> not to say like 13 isn't pouring it on, but. I mean, what are you supposed to do though? Like you're supposed to start taking pitches? Like, no, you go up there. You're, you're literally playing for money, like playing for your job. Yeah, I mean, you're. you're <sighs> Yeah, that's I mean, it's such a baseball thing to, you know, to not run up the score. I mean, did you see that? I don't know if you did. The Nationals, uh, was it Nationals-Giants game? The Nats were pissed that the Giants were trying to score in the ninth inning when they were up 7-1. to one. It's like, dude. Yeah, I mean, come on. There's been like, a, there's been crazier comebacks than that in recent history. Yeah, I mean, it's a six-run game. You're, you're a professional baseball player. Shut the fuck up. Right. I love those unwritten rules of baseball. Or, like, uh, I guess this – maybe this is – more out of line, but with uh, Otani had a perfect game going last week, and a guy that was so I was going to bring that up. Was, on them. That was complete bullshit. And so I guess it it the I love okay, no, what if you, what no, if you, you don't bunt a perfect game? What if that's the playoffs though? 
That's a different argument then. I mean, it wasn't dude, the playoffs. The idea in that situation, no, I agree. You don't. It was like a Wednesday in April. It was. It was a fucking Wednesday six nothing game in April in the sixth inning. Yeah. And even his dude, home what was actually cool booed. about it is the home fans were booing. Yeah, like I know. How crazy is that? Booing their own player. I mean, what situation do you think it is acceptable then to to bunt to break up a no hitter? I mean, a no hitter. I don't care as much. A perfect, me, game, perfect game. Is something special. Um, yeah, I'll say postseason. Postseason is the only time. Or like you know, I don't know if it's like the last week of the regular season and a team's fighting to get into the playoffs and it's like a one run, you know, like a two or three run game. Like I, I guess if the like there's. It's circumstantial. Playoff, it's like, yeah, playoff implications know. in sight. Yeah. You know, exactly. Like in April, no, but September, and you're like, you know, you're two games out or a game out or holding on to a lead in the division or something, then, yeah. But in this situation, no. Who knows, I, though? I mean, these days, guys get pulled when they have perfect games. Yeah. That's <laughs> enough. I, I agree with that, though. Like, I feel like a guy like Clayton Kershaw, he's throwing a no-hitter. I mean, you see, you've seen guys like I feel Johan Santana is the best example where he threw that it was a hundred forty something pitch no hitter before, and he just was not the same after that. I think before that he had a career year, and I know he was getting older. He had a career, career, career. Jesus, speak much? How do you say that word? Career. <laughs> career. Right. He had a career ERA. Did that even? Did I say that right? Yeah, you of did. Like three yeah. two, and then after it was like a, a full run higher. In his career, 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 career. <laughs> that word's starting to sound weird now. Yeah, um, dude. But it, Kershaw was at eighty pitches through seven innings. Like, yeah, but how do you not at least send him out for one more? He had a shortened spring. Like it's, he didn't have a regular spring training. I mean, the fact that he even went seven innings with eighty pitches was like, damn. I don't even know if he's going to go in the, out for the seventh. I know, but I don't care. I'm sending him out for one more. All right, so <laughs> so then that's even worse. Then you're going to pull him for the ninth. No, I mean, it depends. It depends how many pitches he throws. If he gets through the inning unscathed, then he's at, like, under – I mean, let's say he gets through that inning in 10 pitches somehow. Then, yeah, I'm sending him out for the ninth. If you're a manager in that situation, are you just like, fuck, please just give up a hit? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. But that's I think, what I would be like. I had a thousand percent. I, I mean, think Dave Roberts is, like, known for doing that, right? He did it with uh, – in 2016 with Rich Hill, yeah, when he had a perfect game. Yeah, I mean, dude. Come maybe, like, maybe it was a no hitter, but yeah. At the same time, I mean, he's done it in the. That's past. like one of baseball's sacred milestones. Like no hitters happen all the time. Perfect games. Okay, so this is a good embrace debate. Which milestone would you rather have? Would you rather throw a perfect game or reach three thousand hits? Uh three thousand hits. Three thousand hits in like today's game too, where it's like guys like hitting three hundred is hard. These guys are throwing gas. Right. Yeah. I would rather 3,000 hits for sure. I mean, dude, Philip Umber has a perfect game. <laughs> so they, they were talking about that on the radio today, and they all said a per, our, uh, perfect game. And that was the one person I thought of. I was like, Philip Umber threw a perfect game. <laughs> like, anyone, perfect. like, all these guys are good enough in the MLB if you're a starter that where you can just have it working one day. And this is a to sit there and get 3,000 hits over a 15 or 20 year career, that's way more impressive in my opinion i'm gonna ask this on the on the twitter poll here which would you rather do i mean uh, they're different sides of the plate so i mean i guess you could say like a perfect game or three thousand strikeouts but i think three thousand hits works too all right let's see what do we think uh is going to get more votes here i don't know i feel like like casual fans are more enamored by a perfect game the simps, dude. Yes, all them simps. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'd rather have three thousand hits just because I was. I never be like Bernie him. Mac, dude, Mister Three Thousand. It's a two nine 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 nine. I was never a pitcher, so I don't fucking care. But yeah, uh, dude, Max, we're wired the same way. Because I, <laughs> then I started thinking of that movie today as well. <laughs> <laughs> Saw him. You were never a pitcher. You got those short arms, dude. I know. I couldn't pitch. <laughs> <It's> unfortunate. <laughs> He couldn't reach the outside corner either. Oh, he played second base. I threw a fast throw across the diamond. Four seam fastball down the dick. <laughs> Pitch with one of them. 74 flat and pus. <laughs> Just like he likes it. Just how we like it. Just how he drew it up. Where were we? Uh, I don't know. 
Cubs. <laughs> it is interesting. I, 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 it, it, what it, I was gonna say is that like oh that that is what I really did want to bring. That was the three thousand uh, hits debate. So Aaron Boone intentionally walked Miggy at home in the eighth inning when he had the potential to like reach his three thousandth hit in front of his home fans. I mean, granted, he reached it the next day. Yeah, people were saying that's bad form it's like how is that bad form like so sick of that dude it's like cancel culture coming at people on twitter oh god i know it's it's it's, i feel like it's flared up in baseball even more recently yeah it's like grow the fuck up um but what i was gonna say is that 21 zip game like find a better day like that was saturday correct find a better Uh, day to be at wrigley field cubs win 21 zero it's almost 80 degrees in late april I know when we talk about our, uh, or when we talked about like what our perfect day at Wrigley is, I'm just going to say April 23rd, 2022. <laughs> I mean, come on. Like you you're in the bleachers yeah. when the Cubs are scoring left and right. The entire city is partying because of the weather. Like it's finally nice out. Can't that, is, that is like the, the first nice day of spring where the city just blacks out in unison. Yes. yes. Led by Tyler Salm. Ty, how many beer, we, sh- we should have started the pod with that. Ty, how many beers did you have on Saturday? This past Saturday, I was in Tennessee. Uh, I had quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime he's in Tennessee, he's having quite a few. <laughs> yeah. And my brother's neighbor brought over this homemade butterscotch moonshine. Oh, boy. I was wondering how those two were correlated. I was yeah. in Tennessee. I had quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I knew that. Uh, I mean, it, you had at least had to have a dozen. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, dude. A baker's dozen. Uh, I knew it. A baker's dozen. McGrory was at that game, by the way, Saturday. Tough for Pirate, him. Pirates Cubs, yeah. Tough, tough day to be a Pirates fan. I mean, he, he can. I mean, yeah. I'd rather have. I'd rather be him this weekend than us. Uh, but what are you, you gonna do? Pick the wrong game to go to. Of all, yeah. all four of them. I know. Uh, well, uh, real quick, let's jump in. Uh, I keep saying jump in. I don't know why. Let's hop in. Hop in. Career. Career. <laughs> uh, let's cut over. Guts cut over. I need a new yeah, new phrase here. Kyle Schwarber, that outburst. That was fun to watch. Take it over. What are your thoughts? I mean, if I, I've, I've been saying for the last couple of weeks that I miss Kyle Schwarber. Um, haven't, hadn't been following his stats too closely. Just saw like some highlights of him hitting nukes on like Instagram and Twitter and stuff. I think he's hitting like 170. But oh, is he? Yeah. Um, but I've only seen the good. And then I see this last night, like just exploding on Angel Hernandez after a night of awful calls behind the dish. Like that really just made me be like, man, I, I wish Kyle Schwarber was in a college uniform still. That was, it reminded me of in, uh, in 2019 when he got called out on a check swing to end the game. Going at the third base umpire. It was the exact same thing. Yeah. He, and he was just like, fuck you. <laughs> His wires crossed. That's it. Funny and thing is, is he? It seems like he's normally like pretty cool, calm, and collected. Feel, yeah, under control. But so, like something like this, like really sets him off, and he just loses control. Yeah, and I, I think what did it for me, it's not even he threw the bat down. It was the two-handed bat throw. <laughs> he had one hand on the handle, one hand on the barrel, and just chucked it. It was like, the, oh yeah, he's mad. The best is when he's trying to like, like you can clearly tell what he's talking about because he's like. You missed on this side of the plate. You missed on this side of the plate. You missed up here. Like, he was literally just doing hand motions for everything, and he was pointing at the other dugout, pointing at his dugout. He was like saying, he was, like, he sucked he was, for both sides, yeah. Yeah, like, he was literally, like, the players' union. Like, he was leading the charge for all the players in the MLB right there. Oh, it was it was phenomenal. No, I'm, I'm really glad that he just – he went off. I feel like Angel Hernandez is – you think I don't know if the new Joe Dude, he is, makes sense, but he's by far the most hated umpire. Yes, he is notoriously bad. Um, I mean, like, I saw today, you should I, saw today, no I didn't even realize this. Like, I think he tried to like sue the MLB because. Uh, <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? No, I didn't know this. Yeah, so he tried to sue the MLB because like he hasn't been like um, a crew chief manager or even I don't think he's been an ump in a World Series for like 15 years plus or maybe even ever. And they basically, like, in their response to him, they're just, like, nicely put or professionally put. They're like, you fucking suck. So, but basically the umpires union protects him and will never get fired. Yeah, that's not surprising. I mean, oops, can you hear that? (laughs) I don't know how it didn't ring before. 
phone call, dude. Then Whatever. Martin, pick it up. No, it's fine. It's just Ann. So, Hernandez had 19 missed calls last night. Whether it was the oh. – whether, whether he called a strike or didn't call a strike, it was – he had 19 missed calls. Does it have – there's a uh, – like an, em, an empire – umpire auditor on Twitter at, and it gives them like a, a score and obviously the closer to a hundred it is the better. I'm pretty sure I saw his was like, and the league average is around like 94 ish. His was like 86. <laughs> I mean, it's like brutal. He, he was, he was ringing guys up left and right on balls out of the zone. It was insane. He's a, uh, he's something else. Remember he, he threw, I think, is it Steve McMichael or no Mongo McMichael? Yeah. Steve McMichael. Is that his name? Why am I blacking out on that? Yeah, you're right. He threw him out of the game for sing- and after he sang the seven inning stretch. Cause he was like, this up sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I did Angel, not know that. Angel Hernandez. It's pretty funny. I'll, uh, I'll find that clip and send it to you. Uh, the other Chicago sports team, the Sox. Oof. Lost six in a row. Lost Eloy. Eloy. Uh, they're just not good right now. Dude, why does it feel like we're reliving parts of last season with them right now? I don't know. I mean, I feel like Tony La Russa, at first, people hated the hire, and I loved it because it was like he's a Hall of Fame manager, but now I, I feel like I hate it. Yeah. I feel like he, he he doesn't have his fastball anymore. He's just like a, an old curmudgeon batch. They've dropped six in a row here. Yeah. it's. I mean, I'm not going to act – like I watched many of the Sox games. I just watch every Cubs game. But I did watch uh, the end of the game yesterday. He had first base open facing Byron Buxton and just pitched to him. I was like, we're doing this? We're really <laughs> we're really pitching to him? Like, right. It just didn't make any sense. Yep. I mean, I mean, it's it's you know, we're 15 games in. It's one it's like some way too early analysis right now. Obviously, they're gonna ride the ship. But, but I mean, if if Aloy is hurt, then it's I mean, obviously that that throws a, a big wrench into things. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, and Giolito's hurt, Lance or Giolito isn't fully stretched out. He's coming back for injury. Lance Lynn is hurt. It's not looking great. No. I mean, better to have these problems now than later in the season, but yeah, agreed. Uh Ty, what are we looking at on time here? Because I know we forgot to do the on this days. So I don't know if we want to put that in now or yeah, we're uh, 33 minutes. You can do we're that. Buzzing around, snapping buzzing. it around. All right, we'll, we'll do these kind of quick rapid fire here. We'll get, we'll get uh, Max's quick thoughts on these. So a little upcoming preview for this week in Chicago sports history. On April 27th, 2017, the Chicago Bears drafted Mitch Trubisky. Maserati Mitch. Do you remember that day? Do you, like, do you actually remember your thoughts on that day when they drafted him? Correction, Mazda Mitch. <laughs> Mazda Mitch. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, I mean, I I was drinking the Kool-Aid 100% at that point. Like, No, you I, were just drinking. That too. Like, <laughs> anything in sight. I, I believe in Ryan. Vinegar, I believe, anything. I believed in Ryan Pace at that point. So I was like, <laughs> this guy knows something that no one else does. And he's there's a reason that he's taking Trubisky and I'm all in on it. It felt good. Yeah, it did. It felt good. I mean, it was – I mean, it doesn't feel good now. Didn't interview Deshaun Watson? Why would you? I mean, why would you interview the guy that just beat Alabama? I mean, twice, I think. Uh, you know, it, it just – it all made too much sense. Here, here's a question for you guys. If you could go back in time and stop one event from the past from happening ever, Barbie. where where does stopping <laughs> – where does stopping Ryan Pace – from drafting Mitch Rank on that list, um, um, it's high. It's right after, like right after uh, putting a bullet. No, no, I shouldn't even say the bullet. That was me. Probably just right after tying Steve Bartman's hands behind his back, <laughs> or even doing something nice. Just like I don't know, like giving him the winning fifty-fifty raffle ticket, and being like, "Hey, you have to go claim this." Before, yeah, before this draft pick. Just, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a one-time thing. There. <laughs> I, I, the reason, the the reason Bartman is number one is because I really want to know how the rest of that would have played out. But. Yeah, honestly, yeah, I'm right there with you. 
Uh, I think top three sports moments I'd like to overturn in Chicago sports history would be Bartman. Trubisky has to be number two, I think. Yeah, and then this is more a personal one, but uh, I wish Alex Martinez didn't score in game seven of overtime to eliminate the Hawks and the 2014 Western Conference Finals. I think the Hawks would want back-to-back. No one's still got some decent-sized real estate in your head, it seems. (laughs) June 1st. All right, next one. Let's go April 28th, 2012. Uh, actually, this might be a day that maybe maybe this is one that I we go back. Derrick Rose tears his ACL. Oh. Oh. Jeez. I thought we were going to talk about Derrick Rose being the MVP. That's next. <laughs> That's May 3rd. We'll, we'll do, we'll, two for one special. May 3rd, 2011. Derrick Rose wins the, uh, the MVP, becomes the youngest player ever to win uh, an NBA MVP. Fine, we can end on a high note. Might as well talk about the ACL first. Yeah, give me so your thoughts. Bulls were playing the Sixers in that playoff series, and I think they had this game in the back. Like they're oh yeah, up, they're up like fourteen. Yeah, with you know two or three minutes left, and people were mm-hmm. pissed at Tibbs for even having Rose on the floor. But honestly, it's just one of those freak things that could happen at any time. Um, complete devastation. Like I don't know, maybe he was bound to get hurt at some point, but. He was arguably the most dominant Bulls player I've ever actually watched, like as an, you know, as like a mature, not really mature, but like an adult. I mean, yeah, <laughs> obviously, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think who else would be. Maybe Mike Dunleavy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, arguably most dominant point guard I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, easily. Let's, let's broaden it a little. Like, but do you, th- do you think like – this is very much a, a question that nobody knows the answer to, but like his ACLs must've just been ready to go. Like, I don't yeah. think it mattered that he was in the game that like, it, I don't know if it was that, it, if it would like, it mattered that he was in the game then, or if it was game two, it was, I mean, his, ACLs his were just ready style, to go. I, yeah. Just the way, how hard he cut and, you know, threw his body all over the place and the pressure he was putting on his knees. Probably right. I mean, that's crazy to think that that was 10 years ago. Jesus. Holy fuck. That was 10 yeah. years ago. So he averaged in 81 games, he averaged 25 points, 7.7 assists, just over four rebounds, and was only the seventh player in NBA history to do so in a single season. Fifth player in history to post 2,000 points, 600 assists, and 300 rebounds in a season. Is that good? It's good. I mean, think about how many great players have come through the NBA. And, you know, he was only the fifth or seventh player to do those two things. <laughs> I mean, that's just like mind blowing. Honestly, it is it is mind blowing. Oh God. What could have been? Well then so let's talk about let's talk about that MVP. Yeah. So that kind of that those stats that I just ripped off were from his MVP, MVP season. season, obviously, because the 2012, 2011, 2012 season was the lockout shortened season. Yep. But my God, what a he had he had two 40 point games in he had 23 games with at least 30 points. Is that good? It's not bad. I mean, that's what people would say is good. That's outrageous. That honestly is outrageous. Yep. Like, oh, all right. One more, one more on this day. This is another, this is a happy one. This is a good one. Uh, April 29th, 2016. Uh, not, maybe the mo- not the most memorable game, but it's a memorable season, memorable moment as a whole. Uh, the Cubs beat the Braves six to one. Matt Caesar hit a, a grand slam in the eighth inning to secure the game. But the the fact here is that the Cubs started the season, finished April seventeen and five, best April ever, uh, one of the best starts in franchise history. It's just always good to go back to twenty sixteen, happier times. They were so good. Yeah. I mean, it's rare in a baseball season where you feel like you know with a team that you're just like, this is this is it. Like, this is a World Series champion team. But, like, that, you just had that feeling right there after oh, yeah. April. A thousand percent. They had an I mean, all-star batting order from top to bottom. Let's see. So, that their whole – that was their, their whole infield. Their whole infield people was – We're still excited infield. about Jason Hayward at that point in time. Oh, man. Oh, I remember when he signed, we were all texting. We were like, oh, fuck, yeah, this is this is the move that's putting him over the, the, the edge here. Yeah. 
Possibly. I mean, he, gave, he, gave, he gave the speech. He gave he gave the fucking speech. I guess yeah. If that's one hundred eighty-five million dollar speech. And if it's true, then Where's more power to him. Yeah, I don't know, but more power to him. Um, all right, do you want to jump into our starting five here? Yes. We can Everybody hop ready? into it, dude. I'm not jumping anywhere. Did I say jump again? <laughs> we can hop, skip, and jump, jump, into jump, it. jump around. Dude. Let's slide over. Let's punch over to our starting five. Uh, all right, most yeah, most punchable faces. I feel like the first pick has to be who you said. I think we may name it the honor the honor. Yeah. Grayson Allen, starting five, most punchable faces. Grayson Allen can't be picked because this is because of him. Okay. Is that fine? Yep. It's a fair rule. All right. I'm going first, though, because I thought of this one. <laughs> Sounds good. And then who, you guys do rock, paper, scissors quickly. Max, you can just go second. All right, deal. All right, there we go. How's that sound? All right, I'm going to start. I'm going Aaron Rodgers. Okay. I hate, hate that guy. <laughs> That's a great start. I probably would have said it at some point if you didn't. Um, I'm going to go A.J. Przinsky. Oh. How dare you. Michael wow. I, even ha- I have a laundry list of names. I didn't even have them on my list. A nice little play on words because he was punched in the face. Yeah. Very, very much so he was. People forget that. Uh, right. You got my, two. My number one pick, I'm going Conan O'Brien. <laughs> That is, yeah, he's got a nice, you can pow him right in the kissa. Uh, number two, I'm going Bon Jovi. <laughs> Hate that guy. That's, that's a pretty I, obscure I, pick. I've been thinking a lot today. I mean, I've been thinking it for a while, but specifically today. For no reason at all, I hate the band Bon Jovi. Okay. And I just so bad that no you want to punch bon jo- John Bon Jovi. In the face. So I've just been thinking about how much I dislike Bon Jovi for no reason. So ipso facto, he's getting he's got a punchable face. That's well, that, I honestly did not expect Bon Jovi to make this list, but I guess I should, <laughs> that's I for guess sure. I shouldn't be surprised in the slightest. I'm gonna keep taking the low hanging fruit, LeBron James. Oh fuck that face. Fuck that face. Good. Yep. Um, I'm going to say this one because it kind of looks like Grayson Allen, Ted Cruz. That's a good one. And that's my the closest I'm going to get to uh, to Grayson Allen there. Um, my third pick, I'm going to go Jackson Mahomes. I feel like he just got such a punchable sucker face. That's a good pick. I'm going to go – I'll come back with Martin Shkreli. Ooh. Ooh. Pharma, bro. Yeah, he's got a punchable face. Like, he arguably should have been a first-round pick. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, he could have been. He's got a very punchable face. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to get fictional with it. Ronald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> Why, dude? You a big Burger King guy? Uh, actually, I did have Burger King this weekend for the first time in a long time, and that shit still <laughs> fucking bangs, but... Nah, dude. It's like just stupid clown, you know? Stupid Not clown. It. I'm trying to eat nuggets, and you're trying to fucking clown around, dude. You're clowning. Uh, and, and in the same light as uh, Ronald McDonald, we're going Barney. Fucking big, ugly-ass dinosaur. What? Wow, dude. You're really going fictional characters. Yeah. Starting to get abusive on... Your childhood here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just got to the root of all of my problems. Fuck therapy, bro. Who needs it? All right. I'm gonna go uh frat stars. Just as a whole, just as one whole unit. Yeah, just frat stars in general. No, I like that. That's good. I feel like That's more good. often than not, you want to punch frat stars in the face. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. I my all mine were just sports related. That's I just thought of people I hate the most who have just Fuck my face. Um, all right, I'm gonna go Kim Jong Un. Oh, bro, you took my crossed my mind, but I didn't want to say it because I don't want him to come after me. So it's on your hands now. I'm not afraid of him. Not very afraid of him. I don't think that guy actually knows how to read. And then 
Ty, can you read my, my picks? I don't even, I didn't even write them down. I don't even know who I have. Aaron Rodgers, Ted Cruz, Jackson Mahomes, and Kim Jong Un. Oh. Um. All right, I'm gonna go Rafi Torres. I know. Nice. I don't know if you guys know who that is. Yeah, we talked about him. With John, John Scott. Scott. Yeah. Yeah, that guy, uh, Chief Shot at Hosa, and I'll never forgive him for it. So that's my starting five. Solid. Max, you're up. All right, I'm going to go Phillip Rivers. Really? I've, I've always just wanted to punch him. His face has always annoyed the shit out of me. Mm, I could see that, I guess. Um, I could see that. Fuck, I wasn't prepared for a fifth. I'll be quite quite frank with you. I might go. Uh, <laughs> I hate that when we do the starting five and we don't prepare five. <laughs> Alexander Ovechkin. Really? Yeah. You Pittsburgh fan, you. I'm, I'm a Sid guy, dude, through and through. You Sid through and through, huh? Yeah. You just fucking love Sid. Honorable um, mention. Yeah, the thing is, I feel like if you punch Ovechkin in the face, you're going to get one right back. Oh, yeah, that dude would eat my ass for breakfast. You better be prepared. You say beat your ass? <laughs> Without a B. <laughs> Hold the B. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, honorable mentions, Putin. Yeah, Putin's a good one. Just pick all the dictators. You're on a dictator heater right now. Well, he's, he's the one I was afraid would actually come after me. <laughs> well, to be fair, Mussolini did not have a punchable face. <laughs> Handsome guy. Uh, Patrick Reed. Patrick Reed. Oh, uh, God, who's the – not Brooks Kepka, the guy who he always argues oh, with. Bryson. Yeah, Bryson DeChambeau. Bryson DeChambeau. He's got, he's got his first team all punchable face. Roger Goodell. Uh, oh, any white Duke player? <laughs> Just about, yeah. I mean – What about the uh, – Minus J.J. Redick. What about the – Villain kid from the Sandlot. The villain kid from the Sandlot. Oh yeah, yeah. that rides over on his bike and is yeah. fucking. Oh, the one they say you're like, uh, your sister's naked in left field. They talk. Right. Yeah, yeah. The fuck that kid. Bob mm-hmm. apples in the toilet and you like it. Yes. <laughs> uh, Christian Yelich. That's more sub. I hate him just because he's good at baseball. Ryan Braun is a better one, I think. Oh yeah. God damn, you're hot. <laughs> Who's the uh so I have it, I have his name down, but I didn't want to say because I don't know exactly if this is his name. It's, he's like he's the big church guy, Joel Osteen. Oh yeah, Joel Osteen. Is yeah, him. And then uh last one on like the Easter thing, Pontius Pilot. <laughs> Let's end on that one. That's perfect. 